Welcome, welcome everyone. This is Snoo, and it's that time of the league again. I am bringing to you today the How I Farmed My Headhunter in 3.20 Sanctum League in one week time. This is a video where I jam pack as much value as I possibly can, uh, showcasing a full hour of myself farming along the way. Very stressful video to make indeed, but uh, this is the one I do for you guys. I want to, uh, to help you out as much as I can, uh, share as much insight as I can in, in as short a period of time as I can, especially for those who don't have the really good attention spans. Uh, we're going to get started, jump right in. There you can see it, the headhunter is here. But if I am to show you how I farm my headhunter, I can't start with the headhunter now, can I? So we're going to take it off for now and put the soul thirst belt back on. Featuring the build, champion, toxic rain, low life. Build with a Soul Thirst. Um, kind of a quirky little build. It's the one I started. A lot of people followed along. Most people enjoyed it pretty well. A budget of around 10 Divines on day 4. I think I had roughly about 20 Divines now. You're going to see at this point here. Let's just jump in. I got the Atlas tree for you. Which will be linked in the description below. As well as the Path of Building. Also and the Loot Filter. Can't forget about that one. We're going to jump right in, not wasting any time. This is a Crimson Temple Strongbox Divination Card Farm. I know it's going to sound like a broken record, but this is the one I landed on for between days four and day seven. This is exactly how I farmed my headhunter. There were some slight deviations to the strategy, but for the most part, uh, the one I'm showing you today happens to coincide very well with the strategy that helped me level, solo level my way all the way up to level 97. And uh, that is something that also I like doing. If I can manage to level and farm a bunch of currency at the same time at League Start. Every single one of these maps has a pack size of at least 25%. A lot of them are 8-mod corrupted. There are a few un. Uh, unidentified ones here and an alternate sextant will be used in that case the sextants today are elevated gloom shrine enraged strongbox corrupt rare strongbox and smuggler stash you might have noticed heist is playing a little bit of a role we're going to talk about a lot of different things in this video i'm going to start off talking about why i'm doing this build or this strategy or why i farm to headhunter in one week we'll be talking about the build the strategy and we'll be talking about crimson temple all the way down to the smallest detail about how i run the maps there are four major league mechanics that were involved in this strategy we'll talk i'll be devoting some time to those uh, i'll be talking about alternative strategies you can use i definitely did some delirium mirror stuff in this uh, as well although that will not be showcased in this video i'll be talking about magic finding my thoughts on it this league i'll be talking about just my overall reflection on the league and of course what i plan to do moving forward we're going to be using domination on the kyrick bench and we've got a nice juicy A mod corrupted map to start. None of these maps have regen, no regen. That's the only mod I can't run. Every other mod is fine. No master missions. All right, so let's talk about first why I decided to do what I did. So this was the very first league that I had the opportunity to uh, take time off work. And whereas it has taken me at least two weeks, usually two to three weeks, to farm up my first headhunter of a particular league for the past five e leagues that I've played, this league I managed to get it in one week's flat, and that is mostly to do with the fact that I was able to play essentially all day every day. Now, I, st I didn't exactly go full degenerate mode. I still uh, got plenty of sleep. I still went out, did some things as well, at least excluding the very first day. Uh, but... Overall, things went not too bad. I definitely did not receive any sort of major blessing from the RNG gods. I did not get any kind of major unbelievable drops that uh, where I can categorically say, hey, I was lucky to get the league. Last league, I got a, an actual Mirror of Calandra on day six. <laughs> that Nothing like that happened this league. You just had to do it the good old-fashioned hard way. And whereas I can't, went into the league with a very distinct plan that involved doing Breach... Legion and Essence. That plan got shafted pretty hard by a major upset to uh, an Atlas development that resulted in the prices and the supply of certain things such as Legion emblems just being so high that I felt like I just wasn't making a whole lot of currency. And I could be wrong about that, but that was the sort of sense that I got. I was not making as much as I hoped. I've definitely felt like I didn't 
get ahead of a curve. That was my whole point. The whole goal was to get ahead of the curve in some way, shape, or form without, mind you, without any sort of group play uh, help. I did not uh, level in the campaign with a group. I did not share Atlas completion with any uh, with any team, anything like that. It was 100% solo. Uh, the only thing that even involved party play was um, unlocking two of the four Void Stones, uh, for which I paid an appropriate price for a carry in that sense. And so I had to change my plan. I had to figure out something else that was going to garner more currency uh, because I wasn't satisfied with what I was making with that strategy as mentioned. So I uh, packed my bags and I took myself to the Crimson Temple doing strong box farming. As you can see, this is going to look very familiar to a lot of the content I've done. I'm happy to announce today that uh, unlike a lot of strategies that other content creators will present to you in how they farmed up their headhunter, uh, this one is not a niche strategy that uh, goes away after the first few days of the league. In fact, in fact, it's very surprisingly, this strategy, if anything, gets even better, more lucrative as the league goes on. In fact, this is exactly the kind of strategy that for the past two years I have landed on and if you if you were to ask my honest opinion about what is the most lucrative mapping strategy of the entire league of both sentinel and yes even last league with god touch farming i would say it's farming the apothecary card on crimson temple mind you in a manner that is involves more juice than this we're talking things like beyond delirium mirror so while those are not present in here because it's a little bit above my pay grade currently uh those we're very close to that and we still can have some semblance of that sort of farming style and those kind of, kind of results. As you can see, this first map here is basically done. Uh, I just have to basically finish looting everything here. There's a very particular sort of route to that, which I did. I'm going to discuss that a little bit later. Uh, we just follow along. You can see my loot filter is fairly strict. You can, again, find that in the description down below in the video. I think we are out of this map, and of course I'm keeping time of all of this, but again, this is going to be 16 maps, it's going to take me about one hour to run 16 maps, and I typically do not keep this armor unless it rolls extremely well. We'll we will have to manually calculate the heist materials afterwards, and I will have to just simply inform you on what they're worth. I'm quite aware of what each one of those materials is worth. Uh, heist, of course, is particularly good at the very beginning of the league, but even it still holds a lot of its longevity throughout the league in terms of the value of blueprints, contracts, things like that. Here we're going to map two. I should probably talk a little bit about the build. I got Toxic Rain, Low Life Champion. I was excited to try Low Life because of the uh, first to strike, last to fall node. I think it'll synergize extremely well, uh, particularly with any sort of magic find divination distillate shenanigans that I was already kind of doing last league. So, um, kind of uh, spilling the beans here later on. I'm going to talk about moving forward, but moving forward definitely going to involve a little bit of magic finding and a different uh, a different build altogether. Uh, this build, however, is Toxic Rain. You can uh, instead do, let's see, you can do Caustic Arrow. If you want, with um, Aero Nova support, that's a very popular one. These are both self-cast builds, which I'm talking about. Uh, builds that rely most on the Ballista Totems for their damage are very popular this league. However, that is a play style I'm not particularly fond of. I like uh, being the one in charge of my damage. I like being in control, having the self-cast be the primary form of the damage, and then uh, focus Ballistas just being supplementing that, essentially. Toxic Rain is a great all-arounder build. Generally speaking, it's very capable of handling uh, bosses, at least easy bosses, maybe not uh, uber bosses, but certainly unlocking a lot of your own atlas. It can do that. Uh, it's also quite good at clear. However, it does fall a little bit short of a lot of different builds out there in terms of clear. And for which reason, why? I decided to go shrines involving a gull helm. And I decided to also... Put the Gloom Shrine as a primary sextant involved. 
and that really really supercharges a clear now the major disadvantage to using a gloom shrine is that it's on a timer also you need to be at least tanky enough so that you don't die right and left having shrines in general and domination on the map device is a huge synergy that helps the survivability and increased speed as well we haven't seen the acceleration speed shrine yet but you're going to see it at some point you can see how outrageous it is uh, in culmination with the gull helm And as long as I'm able to clear most and do most of what I need to do in two minutes time flat, uh, I will make great use of that. And I'll essentially have the, the clear of a of a supercharged occultist <laughs> uh, profane bloom character, uh, except on whatever ascendancy I want for the price of one sexton and for the price of having to go fast. Of course, I already want to go fast. Uh, in all my time playing uh, Path of Exile, I've discovered that going fast seems to be uh, the fastest way to accumulate the fastest amount of currency, if you get what I'm saying. Uh, and that is, of course, my biggest secret of all, is basically the speed. That is really what sets me apart from most players. And whenever I'm mapping, I there are just a lot of different types of builds that I just basically refuse to play because they're simply not fast enough. Over the course of the last year, GGG has set to slow us down a bit, which I'm actually totally on board with. I don't mind being uh, slowed down a bit. Basically, I'll move however fast they let me move. And as long as I can move as fast as they'll let me move, I'm pretty happy with that. In other words, it doesn't really matter how fast. Okay. If you have any questions about Toxic Rain, the build, you can definitely post them in the description down below. There's a gear right here. I really like having Lori's Lantern. What an incredibly strong ring in conjunction with this Ascendancy and uh, everything else. This, this does happen to be ailment avoidance 100%. This particular build, thanks to uh, most of the passives. Some of the passives, 70% via the passives and then an extra 30% thanks to these boots right here. The most expensive item I have is this amulet. It's the only one that involved a major uh, meta craft for two divines to meta craft uh, to result that amulet. Everything else pretty cheap. I have not seen that bow in a long time. Okay. So you can see I hit a nice divine or a nice not divine <laughs> a nice altar there of the Grand Eldritch Ikers. That is definitely uh, something that's happening. I will be excited to try some different altar strategies involved eater of worlds is not as good as searing exarch uh, strictly speaking in terms of consistency but in the case of divination card farming our primary goal is to increase quantity of rarity and uh, duplicating chance things like that which are all player-based altars which means uh, eater of the worlds eater of worlds is the clear winner here in this case for this particular strategy all right, you remember me talking about that acceleration speed shrine. Now you're getting to see uh, the true wonder of moving fast. Okay, duped. Okay, yes. Let's talk about the strategy. You'll notice that here on map number three, I'm basically staying in the middle, right? I'm essentially r rushing the boss. I am picking up whatever shrines and uh, Nico nodes I can for the pact with energy. Uh, synergy to help and give give me some added damage speed and defense uh, but you see again I'm staying up the middle the boss is cleared now I get nothing but player and minion related altars yes I still think boss altars suck overall uh, they're really not good unless you're not juicing your map at all since I am juicing the map at least at all uh, they just really can't hold a candle many altars spawn in every map uh, I feel like I get an average of maybe three to five altars every map I'm basically just going around hitting the edges out. The Gloom Shrine fully cleared. A lot of stuff. Yes, I know there are a lot of minions still alive, but at this point I've cleared both wings of the map. I go back up, up and down the middle. I'm now doing the strong box segment of the circuit. You could call this the Crimson Temple circuit, where now I am I'm not looting still. But I am opening up essences and uh, blue getting blueprints wherever if they drop, hitting whatever remaining shrines may sh show up that I missed opening up all the all the strong boxes on that wing now I just have one wing left and it's right here 
The Acceleration Speed Shrine combined with the Gloom Shrine is just absolute outrageous overpowered play. Uh, nothing in this game can compete with this sort of speed and player power in my opinion. And, and the crazy thing is you don't even need a strong character to have this. It's borrowed power within the map. And while it is not deterministic, it's not something you can get guaranteed, it is certainly something that you can expect to see uh, periodically. And you can certainly... Uh, bask in the enjoyment of <laughs> of this experience. I'm telling you, there's nothing like it, uh, having this sort of borrowed power. In fact, in my opinion, it even exceeds uh, the amount of enjoyment a headhunter gives itself, if you can believe that. Although I guess uh, I am saying that knowing that I also have Soul Leader. <laughs> so may maybe without Soul Leader, it's not quite that good, but still pretty close. So now uh, I've already gone up the middle down the sides again. I'm basically just focused on looting. There might be a couple monsters still alive. You know, the really nice thing about Toxic Rain compared to Tornado Shot right now at this point in the map, when I was running my Tornado Shot Soul Thirst uh, Deadeye from last league, I was very weak, very susceptible to being picked off by a random rare monster, you know, Arch Nemesis or not. Uh, and such is not the case with this character. First of all, the champion's more tanky, generally speaking, and then Toxic Rain can absolutely handle one, you know, random monster straggling along the side, uh, even if it's a tanky one. Even if it's an essence monster, it can still handle it pretty well. Only the absolute most outrageous essence monsters are, are kind of difficult for me to take down on this map. Quick note, you'll notice I'm picking up Gambler cards. The reason I'm picking up the Gambler is because 449 Gamblers drop for every Apothecary approximately. That's based on data uh, from some folks who opened a bunch of stacked decks, like thousands upon thousands of stacked decks uh, earlier a couple leagues ago. Yes, that's a couple leagues ago in Sentinel League. Uh, we received a global nerf in to loot in terms of raw drops across the board overall. That happened uh, last league, however, uh, right now at this present time, after having farmed, I don't know, roughly 3,000 Crimson Temple maps lifetime, I would say that I don't think Divination card drops were nerfed. So let's just get that out, out in the air. I would, I would even put money on that, that there was no sort of shenanigans gone that took place that uh, where GGG selectively nerfed the Apothecary card. I did think for a second there last league that that might have been the case, but upon further analysis and running more maps last league, I don't think that's in fact the case. Yes, I'm not finding as much loot now as I was in the middle of Sentinel League. You know why that is? That's because Sentinel League, more stuff dropped. There was quantity put on based through the Sentinels. Uh, there was a bit more player power. The maps were all easier to run. And uh, we, we can more easily and quickly accumulate magic fine characters. And we were all faster and everything. So that's why you feel like you're getting less loot. And you are getting less loot in that sense, but uh, relative to the the cards themselves, if I got 449 Gambler cards in Sentinel League, I got one Apothecary. If I get 449 Gambler cards in uh, in uh, Lake of Calandra, I get one Apothecary. If I get 449 Gambler cards this league, I'm getting one Apothecary. Those are, of course, averages, and yeah, RNG can slap you in the face sometimes. I went about 250 maps. Roughly uh, a thousand gambler cards before I saw my first apothecary this league. I have only seen one apothecary this league. So you might be sitting there wondering to yourself, how in the world did you farm up an, a, a, a mage, or how did you farm up enough currency to buy a headhunter if you were not getting apothecary cards <laughs> except for one? Well, that's a good question. Uh, much to everyone's surprise, this particular strategy does. Uh, Pay very close attention. This particular strategy does not depend on you finding apothecaries in order to make currency with this strategy. If you're doing this exactly the same way I'm doing it, you're going to make, count them, at least five divines an hour. I tested the currency I was earning. I was very thorough about it. Four separate times, days four through seven, on each day, at one point on each day, in at least a 32-map session, I, I tracked thy currency earnings. And obviously, the first three days there, no apothecaries dropped. In every single case, without exception, I was earning at least five divines an hour. In fact, that number 
as a general trend, that number has been going up. So it started around five and a half divines an hour. The next day was around six divines an hour. The following day was around six and a half divines an hour. And then uh, I believe earlier today I tested and it was about eight divines an hour with no apothecaries. Now there's some other luck involved. Maybe I got a good unique. Maybe I got some divine orbs. I don't know, but uh, I'm tracking it all over the place more than most people are doing. And I can confirm to you all that uh, investing currency into divination card farming on the apothecary while this di this is a ford at this point it's about 40 chaos per map invested these materials are around 40 chaos per map still making currency and quite a bit of it oh and that's without any divine orb altars by the way yes i have seen the divine orb altar once it was on a crimson township map on day three i was not yet farming divination cards at that time so that's completely unrelated Incidentally, I only got five Divine Orbs from that altar. But I figured I'd throw that in in case anybody was like, well, maybe you got Divine Orb altar. No. <laughs> I wish. Maybe we'll see it here. I don't know. I'm really a big fan of Crimson Temple. I know a lot of people don't like it. I've heard a lot of other prominent streamers really, really express express displeasure when talking about farming this map over whatever other map you know one of the biggest things i like about this map is the route for um, delirium farming as opposed to the other three with that defile cathedral and crimson township this map absolutely uh, best the other two in terms of how you can handle delirium mirror keeping the delirium mirror alive and getting the most out of that even without a delirium mirror i think this is the best map it's it's uh that would be mainly because you can rush the boss as well so it it, it simultaneously is the best deli map and boss rushing map which is a pretty rare combination i would say quite surprising and i mean for those two reasons alone that that makes it the best in my eye in my eyes uh, a lot of people don't like it because it seems to have dead ends i don't know i don't really see any dead ends guys if usually i'm not seeing dead ends, as long as you know where you're going now see i'm actually supposed to be going up the middle here this is as long as you sort of stay disciplined in your pathing like what i wasn't doing there for a second so now i'm doing the straight down the middle opening up all the strong boxes down the middle we'll do the wings shortly i think of this as basically a figure eight with a line straight through the middle and you know, I do the line first, and I do the figure eight second, and I go back up the line, do the figure eight again, and I go back up the line one more time to loot, and do the figure eight one more time to loot, and the map is done. So essentially, it's a circuit, run it three times, and you're done. It's really nice because I can get all the altars out of the way and all the shrines out of the way before I start opening strong boxes. I have maximum pack size, quantity, and duplication opportunities. For that reason, I can turn around and toxic rain my way through all the strong boxes safely. I can carpet bomb the area, which is, by the way, extremely good. This build is extremely good for this particular strategy. Uh, and then uh, just keep moving forward. Like here, I carpet bomb the area. I'm already moving away. It will open on its own, even if there is a unique boss type monster there i will usually die from all that damage over time while it just stands there soaking up damage completely out of range of hitting me and uh, it, it works wonderfully in fact it, it works even better than tornado shot at least at this gear threshold now obviously if i'm running a multi-mirror tier tornado shot character that's going to be better but uh, for this gear threshold of around 20 divines absolutely takes the cake so huge huge fan of uh, toxic rain uh, farming uh, strong boxes. I really can't think of, of a skill that's much be would be much stronger than this for this particular uh, type of farming. Uh, incidentally, where I was trying Legion, Breach, and Essence, it is pretty good at Essence, but uh, Legion and Breach eh, falls a little short, especially with a clear, especially on Breach. Uh, trying to get the most out of Breach just doesn't work out too well. Oh. Well. <laughs> I just died. I could have uh, saved myself there if I needed to, but I think that map's basically done anyway. If it's not done, it was so close, so I'm just going to go ahead and call that map done. Now, am I making my currency back every single map I do? No, I mean, there's some maps where you get a little bit unlucky and really, really may not be actually making 40 chaos back, but the vast majority of maps uh, making it back for sure. Let's talk about strong boxing general right here. I've already kind of on the topic a little bit. So, 
Strongbox involves a sextant, 500% increased quantity of drops from monsters that spawns from strongboxes. Uh, this is what really makes this strategy shine. Without that, you're not there, there's nothing special about this strategy in terms of uh, how capable it is of dropping divination cards. Incidentally, in case you weren't aware, rarity has no effect on divination card drops, so it's exclusive to quantity multipliers. When you're able to put a 500% quantity multiplier onto uh, monsters in a very easy way, uh, that makes a world of a difference in terms of your drops. Oh, there, that's a really hard essence monster right there. Okay, unfortunate. It's fine, we'll just get right back in. That can never happen. That's why we're running these uh, 8 mod corrupted maps in many cases. So if you take 500, multiply it on top of the uh, multiplier you see here, which is 134%. Well, you can see that's well over 1,000%. Increased drops, right? And so that, if you're wondering how, how you how you even really have a chance of seeing the apothecary card, I've ran, you know, if you're if you're one of those people who's ran uh, a thousand Crimson Temple maps and never seen an apothecary card, well, uh, what kind of strategy were you using? Were you, if you were just using Alk and Go, I would say, well, I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised to hear of anyone who's ran this map a thousand times, not seen an apothecary, uh, if their strategy was Alk and Go. Uh, because you, you're not obviously not playing with a 1,000% quantity multiplier <laughs> if you're doing Alk and Go. That's why it's important that you actually have a strategy where you can pull out those divination cards as much as possible, way beyond the default, and that's why this, when it comes to divination card farming, you really can't do an Alk and Go. Alk and Go is just... A, Alk and Go is great for a lot of different things. It's, it's amazing for altar farming. It's amazing nowadays for all kinds of league mechanics. For divination card farming, it is absolutely terrible. Don't recommend. You really need to do divination card farming via the strong box. There's no better way. Absolutely no better way to do it than that. And trust me, I've, I've done a lot of divination card farming in my day. Now, because I died on this map, I'm a little bit uh, confused about the exact routes I took. I still got those crazy essence monsters that are alive over here. Okay, they're finally dead now. Maybe I can regain my composure. Uh, I see. That's why they were extra hard, or one of them had, the, uh, had a major conversion table into them. Oh, you might be wondering if I've seen any uh, magic find major conversions. I have seen divine orbs uh, here and there. I think I've seen at most three uh, currency conversions that resulted in a Divine Orb drop this league, and that's a very small number, considering I have been running Reliquary Scarabs, uh, at least uh, Polish Reliquary Scarabs, for a lot of my maps. Um, although, you know, I'm not running Legion, Breach, and other mechanics that are spawning an insane number of rares, so keep that in mind. Uh, but yeah, we'll talk a little bit more about Magic Find at a later time. We're going to finish clearing this map up. Somebody's wondering how much uh, quantity and rarity I'm running. I think it's about 140% rarity and 9% quantity, as I do have a Ventor's Gamble. But do keep in mind, I have a an increased effect of shrines via Gull Shrine, as well as Atlas Passives, and Covetous Shrine as a 10% chance... 10% chance to spawn every time. That does result in me having roughly 40% increased quantity across the board, which does matter. It does matter outside of the strong box, but I do not think that multiplies with the strong box in rage monsters. However, uh, it, it is strong when it comes to every other type of monster that I'm killing in this map. By the way, you'll notice there aren't a whole lot of other monsters I'm killing in this map because I didn't even elect to throw Harbingers onto these maps. I decided to just leave them off. I, I don't want to be spending much time. That's why uh, I'm doing Heist and Essence because I basically I want all of my time devoted towards uh, farming divination cards via the strong box. I just know how potent that is. Nothing else can hold a candle to it. So why spend extra time in the map doing anything really uh, if it's not going to... Uh, if it's nowhere near as efficient as the strong box. Now, Essence and Heist, opening a smuggler stash, those things are so fast. Uh, again, as long as I don't die from Essence, obviously. Uh, they're so fast that I, I will settle for doing those things in the map. Uh, you'll notice that the Essence monster I died from earlier last map... I actually made an error in that I decided to open that before I had gotten all the shrines. I should have waited until I received all the shrines. I would have had acceleration shrine and all kinds of other resistance shrines, things like that. So, 
that was actually my fault, and I could have probably avoided the death if I had done that. Oh yeah, and also the Pact with Energy Nico stuff as well. Okay, so we're doing a circuit as always. I'm going around. I have not opened any strong boxes yet, mainly just forcing altars out if they can. Looks like we got unlucky and only got one altar to spawn on this map. But that's alright. I got the movement speed, so this is nice. And, I mean, I don't know. Do uh, I'll ask you, does it look like uh, does it look like I'm close to dying at any point here? <laughs> In a moment like this, I, th there's almost no way that I would die with this sort of borrowed power that I have right now. It could happen, but it just be so unlikely that the moment the monsters could even target me, I'm already bailed out of there. And I really, again, I really can't stress how good that is where the toxic rain is just sort of continues to carpet bomb <laughs> the area well past the time that I'm over there. Absolutely insane how strong that is. Got another decent uh, altar. That's right. It was uh, Greater Eldritch Currencies. Here is not bad. They're worth uh, at least, I don't know, around a, a... They're worth over one chaos apiece for sure, so... That's nice. There's one saving grace of the uh, Eater of Worlds altar. You can sometimes get the Eldritch Currencies and they are still worth quite a bit. Okay. Gonna reopen some of these strong boxes. That happens a lot too. It's really nice. Just free opportunity at a Divination card. There, in 16 maps, I should see at least one major card, at least one Seven Years, or Enlightened, or Dragonheart. Pro I mean, obviously I don't deserve to see an Apothecary in just 16 maps. It could happen. Um, I don't know. We'll have to see. As long as I keep seeing Gambler cards, I know that I'm making progress. Six Gambler cards at map, that's actually pretty nice. That's a good number. Let's talk a bit about Shrines. I've already talked a little bit about it. Virtually every single Shrine is valuable. Every single Shrine is duplicated uh, in terms of, uh, or not duplicated, but has a, se has a second additional Shrine effect. So when I click this Shrine, I actually get two Shrines, not one. The Brutal Shrine is actually... Ironically, a shrine that almost backfires a little bit. It, it, it depends on the situation, but can backfire a little bit. Uh, but you can see I now have sh four shrine effects on, but I've only hit th two. Okay, there's another one there. But again, uh, oh, none of these shrines do anything compared to the goal shrine. The, the goal, or I'm, I'm sorry, the uh, gloom shrine. <laughs> gloom goal, the same. Uh, yeah, so here you can see where the Brutal Shrine actually has a negative impact when it uh, comes to trying to fight a single target that would otherwise stand still. It's pushing it off to the side. That, that doesn't really matter for to uh, Toxic Rain, but it does for... Um, oh, sorry, it doesn't really matter for Tornado Shot, but it does for Toxic Rain. That's what I meant to say. R uh, rusted Harmon, you scarab, okay. And here we got Divination Card Dupes. It is somewhat of a rare altar these days, but it does spawn with a very high number, so that's exciting. Now I know I have a, what was it, I think it was a 29% chance to duplicate uh, Apothecary cards, <laughs> as well as any other card during this time. But you can see I still haven't found that Gloom Shrine. Here it is, finally, all right. So now I'm free to do what I need to do, and I'm basically at that point where I should start opening strong boxes anyway. And yeah, we're opening strong boxes now. So Domination puts three shrines on the map. Uh, a couple of days ago, it put four on the map and cost four chaos speed. So I would rather have four for four chaos, but I'll take three for three chaos. I'd probably pay 30 chaos for three shrines, honestly, with how insanely powerful these are. And uh, I'm only half joking about that. Uh, I'm not really sure exactly what number I would pay. But it's certainly a lot higher than three. <laughs> I would pay a lot more than three chaos per map for this, given how much uh, borrowed power it's giving me. I mean, wouldn't you? If you if you 
got to have this sort of borrowed power even if it is only for two minutes uh yeah the resistance shrine is absolutely insane uh it, it automatically takes me up to 90 all res 90 percent all max elemental res <laughs> which is i mean you know that basically makes you immune essentially immune to elemental damage i mean effectively on a map like this uh it, it's 90 and it's like 80 i think it's 86 percent all res on a minus max res map <laughs> so <laughs> that's how crazy strong it is there are also small shrines, you will have noticed, there are little, little uh, mini shrines, they, they spawn due to the gull shrine. They have about uh, a third of the effectiveness, maybe a quarter or a third of the effectiveness as the major shrine, so they're not nearly as uh, potent. And of course there is no small gloom shrine, but uh, they can still be useful, especially the minor acceleration speed shrines, still does matter uh, quite a bit. Question in the chat, you're not switching to Headhunter yet? Nope, uh, I am recording a video on how I farmed my Headhunter this league. So, can't be wearing a Headhunter when I'm talking about how I farmed a Headhunter. That wouldn't make much sense. As much as I'd like to be playing with a head, uh, <laughs> Headhunter right now. We're going to talk about Heist next. So, Heist is a unique... Um, mechanic that's involved in mapping and usually it's it's not really a big part of mapping but with uh, atlas passive changes that took place especially this past league we now have all kinds of incredible goodies including uh i like these wheels up here no honor among thieves and uh casing the joint look how much additional chance i have to spawn a smuggler stash actually pretty insane now uh how much heist how many heist materials you can get just from mapping uh with or without a sextant by the way but with the sextant you, you definitely uh, increasing some synergies there. Uh, people often overlook just how valuable heist materials can be, especially early in the league. But no, even even at this point, two, three weeks into the league, is still uh, quite strong. Blueprints uh, fully revealed come occasionally. They can be worth as much as 100 chaos or more, depending on what kind of blueprint it is. Uh, I've already gotten a few of those this league. Uh, pretty insane, you know, when you're just kind of opening some smuggler stashes and, and, and 100 chaos pops out of there out of nowhere. And you don't even realize it until you check <laughs> how many w wings it had. Uh, blueprints pop out of these things more often than usual because of the synergies in the Atlas passives. Uh, you can bulk sell heist materials on TFT pretty conveniently. If you're not doing it that way, it can be a little bit annoying. Deception contracts are selling, basically flying off the shelf at 9 chaos apiece. Uh, at least at 80, item level 83. Uh, unusual gems will also fly off the shelf at around like 18 chaos apiece. Um, you still have a few others that are worth also around 10 chaos apiece or more, including things like replica blueprints. Well, that's about it as far as more than 10 chaos apiece in value. Uh, but I've sold quite a few. And it's very wise to just wait until you bulk up a whole bunch of them. The same can be said about essence as well, which I guess we can talk about right here. I am using Corrupted Essences uh, occasionally, depending on what kind of uh, essence it is. I'm not going to really talk in detail about that. There's different ways. I actually shouldn't have used it there because I just forced a Shrieking Dread Essence up to uh, <laughs> uh, up to Deafening, and I didn't double-check that there was a Screaming Essence on there that would take it back up to Shrieking, so I actually lost a monster there. Uh, a lot of the essences are worth a ton right now. Absolutely crazy how strong essences are. I'm not the least bit surprised out of the Breach, Legion, and Essence decision. Ironically, Essence was kind of like the best choice there. So many people chose not to do Essence. I knew that would be the case. As there were A lot of people were let down by the fact that Essence was taken off of Garrett Crafting Bench. I mean, it's not like Essence loses its value and people still need Essences. Uh, early in the league, especially these days with uh, fractured crafting, that that's sort of the meta crafting now it involves essences a lot more than it used to. Uh, so, I am absolutely big on essences. Those monsters can still be pretty hard, so it feels good to do, use a strategy that uh, is extremely good uh, with essences. So, if I was trying to run uh, caustic arrow, for example, I would have a lot harder time, even with um, Val Caustic Arrow, which I have tested, by the way. Uh, I would have a harder time handling these essences. 
essence as well as saying i'm curious to hear you guys opinion if you don't mind in the comment section below if you're farming essences how are you finding it uh is, is there anybody out there who's just sort of purely farming essences i am curious i have not tested exactly how much currency per hour essences are making uh these days it, just kind of looking at it exclusively that would be an interesting thing to track i think because i think there's a there is a wide perception out there that Essence just really isn't all that uh, lucrative because you can only put so many on the map. There happens to be a sextant for Essence, and, and I, I was actually using that sextant uh, for a little while. Uh, increases the number of Essence monsters on the map by one. So instead of having one, you'll have two. Of course, with a chance of seeing three or maybe even four. Um, so that is actually a pretty good choice, this league especially, I think. For this particular strategy, I chose not to do um, that sextant, however. Essentially, the sextant I use are always going to be both strong box with the Gloom Shrine, and then the fourth one is a flexible one. There, In times past, it has been a Delirium Mirror. In times past, it's, it's been uh, Hunted Traders is also a popular one. Uh, but again, I should probably save that for the uh, alternate discussion about alternate things. Oh, which is actually next. <laughs> that is actually next on the topic list. Uh, okay, so alternate strategies. I can't open the passive skill tree or the Atlas passive skill tree right now, but uh, alternate strategies, there are quite a few. Again, I, my my rock, my grounding place is uh, Gloom Shrine. Oh, here we go. You got to see the Smuggler Stash mass spawn. So you can see a lot of... Probably a lot of blueprints here. Raw Exalted Orb, not a Divine Orb, unfortunately. So Essence can be involved. I mean, you can squeeze... I have squeezed Legion into this before, although now Legion demands too many passive points to really uh, do it. Um, oh, that's interesting to see that there. So basically for me, it's, it's somewhere between Delirium... Uh, outside of strong boss, it's, it's like beyond, and or delirium, and or essence, and or um, heist, and that's about it. Really, those are the ones that I typically go for. It'll be really unfortunate, actually, if I don't see a single raw divine or uh, divination card, then this is going not really going to reflect. A typical farming session, but at least you'll kind of get to see what kind of currency I make on the low end when that happens. So, I mean, there's certainly some value there. Get bad RNG sometimes. We are over halfway done with this, and absolutely not a single remarkable drop here. Just very sort of lackluster drops, but I still feel like it's going all right. Not too bad. When it comes to alternate strategies, uh, I'm curious on from you guys on what kind of alternate strategies you might be coming up with when it comes to uh, a strongbox farm like this. I do like farming, by the way, on um, the Colonnade. It's a really nice map. And I actually did start on the Colonnade to first make up some currency first. So by the way, if you're looking at this and this particular strategy I'm doing and you're saying to yourself, man, I don't know. I don't know if I can take the orange Jesus of uh, <laughs> the strategy. Well, I mean, you can start on the colonnade. It's not bad. But uh, trust me when I say, when you check, when you juxtapose the, the divination card drop rates, which divination cards exist on the map, and you, you check, you know, the cost, the investments, and everything, you put it all together, you will see that more currency is to be made uh, on, well, really, any of the apothecary map layouts than it is on any of the sort of headhunter card map layouts, including uh, burial chambers. Even burial chambers is not going to result in as much currency uh, as this. Although, you do have to consider the map layout. Oh, is that a second raw exalt? No, that was the first one. Never mind. So a lot of people really like burial chambers. A lot of people like tower map, too. Those are, I, I really personally do like the tower map, although it's been out of the mix for a couple of leagues straight, unfortunately. Uh, but as far as burial chambers, just not a big fan, especially since a lot of league mechanics can spawn in the very bottom. Uh, I've had like legions and or breaches spawn in the bottom and it doesn't make me very happy.
question in the chat. How exactly do these returns pay for the cost of the sextants and everything else? Well, we're going to find out, aren't we? Okay, that two dust is not worth anything. I have excellence open. 16 maps. The, uh, the investment cost was uh, roughly three, a little over three divines. Came out to just about 40 chaos per map invested. That's including the scarabs, including the sextants, including the uh, domination put on the map device. So everything is included there. Of course, the sextants do slowly go up over time. That's a kind of a given. Let me get myself killed right here and now I'm taking extra damage. Those are some really nice starts to the uh, shine here. That one has minus cold res and lightning res, so I'm not taking it for that reason. How many shrines are we going to get here? This is a lot of shrines right off the bat. By the way, this does maps fully uh, map sustained. No problem with sustaining maps on this strategy. Uh, bad timing going for the boss there. I already talked about how I kind of rolled the maps, but uh, typically rolled them all up to 25% pack size or more, and then I'm able to keep essentially three quarters of the map, whether it goes unidentified, stays the same, or goes 8-mod corrupted. As long as it does one of those three things, the map is good for keeping. That was fast. Sustained with no map nodes. Okay, a Sephiroth drop. You might wonder how the hell did a Sephiroth drop. That dropped from the altar mo uh, node, which I think, actually I hit two of the same altar, which is it drops, uh, it drops divination cards for basic currencies. So, of course, the vast majority of those cards that come out are going to be Reign of Chaos. Like, the vast, vast majority of them are going to be absolute garbage. But uh, my loot filter is fairly strict, and you can't see it now, but, I mean, I'll probably drop, like, over a hundred divination cards on this map alone just from that uh, altar effect and yeah like 50 of them are reign of chaos but on very rare occasion of course you're gonna see a card like the sephiroth come out i've seen divine beauty drop as well from this too so i mean these things do i've seen brother stash drop that can drop as well uh, yes, I have um, Crimson Temple. One, Strand is also favorited for the adjacent. Strand is the highest selling map in the league right now, I think. Anyway, so that's uh, really good. In fact, people, players who are running Strand are actually favored in Crimson Temple. So, ironically, Crimson Temple is a lot cheaper than normal. So, it should be pretty easy to get us started. But everybody's running Strand because it was popularized by content creators this league with uh, Deli Orb Farming in particular. And a lot of people like running it for um, Legion because it's like really short and still has some pretty good Legion opportunities there. How nice would Defile Cathedral be? Uh, it's not very good. Can't rush to the boss. You can't. You, you cannot get from one part of the map to another part of the map very quickly like you can in Crimson Temple. So Crimson Temple, you can, you know, let's say you're on one end of the map and, and you want to get to the other end of the map. You can still do that pretty quickly. Like, it's, it's not hard. There's definitely a route there you can take. So as long as you are super familiar with the route of Crimson Temple and you get it down, uh, down pat, you know, as I have ran around a thousand Crimson Temple maps, um, it, it's, it's like the back of my hand. I can manage that pretty easily. So now we have one, uh, what I would call, notable drop uh, in the bank. So I'm happy at least one <laughs> notable drop happened. Uh, Zadrin, I, I didn't see you earlier. You subscribed. I appreciate that, buddy. Not sure why I didn't hear that. Let me talk about magic finding a little bit. Now, magic finding is a hot topic, you know... Um, uh, it, it's hard to say this without bragging, but uh, I, I think I was something of, of a showman last league with uh, all those perception versus reality videos related to God Touch farming and stuff. I, I definitely uh, earned some stripes in the community last league with doing that. So you can probably imagine that uh, I'm someone who is very eager to see what Magic Finding had to offer this league and with, with God Touch farming or, or rather just generic rare conversion farming. So there is a rumor, it's, it's un, un, 
confirmed, but uh, there's a rumor floating out there that Magic Finding might be kind of dead this league on account of uh, it not the conversions no longer, perhaps, no longer uh, reading into player rarity. Uh, nothing is said about Reliquary Scarab, however. It, it presumably would still be reading into a Reliquary Scarab on the conversion. Uh, but again, it's unknown, and I've not really done any major testing. I am wearing a Ventor's Gamble and a Gold Flask, so I do have a little bit of rarity, and I like running the Reliquary Scarab. But you know, I'll... I will say one thing in defense of Magic Finding this league is this, this is the most valuable uniques I've ever seen. Like like in the state of unique items, their value just gener generically, whether they roll well or not in many cases, there are still a lot of uniques out there in the market that are worth at least one Divine Orb. A lot of chess pieces, especially like Brass Dome, Covenant, Diala's Malefaction, or just to name a few there. Uh, it doesn't even matter what the roll is on those. They're still worth at least one Divine apiece. Even a full week into the league. There's a lot of um, uniques that are still worth 20, 30, 40 chaos. And I'm pretty happy about that. So I still feel pretty good about running Reliquary Scarab. Uh, I like to think that I'm probably getting a little bit more better conversions out of it anyway. You know what? If I'm not, it's not the end of the world. Reliquary Scarab is quite unpopular right now. They don't even cost three chaos a piece to run. Which, I mean, <laughs> think about... This is polished reliquary, by the way. Think about how uh, <laughs> how cheap that is compared to last league. A polished reliquary scarab last league was over 10 chaos apiece uh, in the end. So to see it that cheap is just uh, mind-boggling. And I'm perfectly happy with throwing that on there. What else am I going to put on there? I guess the only other thing I would put on there would be an elder scarab. So hearkening back to alternative strategies, you could definitely be running an elder scarab instead of... Uh, the Scarab. Reliquary Scarab. Oh, wow. We sure do get a lot of Scarabs from uh, Operative Strong Boxes. Not gonna lie. <laughs> People talk about how um, Skittering Orb Deli Farming is like, you know, oh my god, so many Scarabs. I, I challenge you to do that. I mean, look, look at this right now here. Look how many Scarabs I already got. It's already quite a few scarabs in there. Now, it's not like what you're going to see with uh, Skittering Deli Orb, but uh, you know, make no mistake, that is a lot of scarabs. So here we go. I got my first unidentified map. The uh, sextant, is a, there is a sextant swap here out of the, um, what is it? out of the uh, heist smuggler stash into 20% increased pack size on the map for unidentified. So that's 30% increased quantity because it's un unidentified and 20% increased pack size. So these now are at least 45% uh, increased pack size maps. Uh, let's see what this is. It's 56% increased pack size. It's it's basically about the same as an 8 mod corrupted map. The only thing that is worse is the rarity. So the inherent maps rarity roll is definitely less, but everything else is pretty good. Of course, I'm not terribly upset with uh, having less rarity roll, especially in this climate. Wow, that's uh, that's going to be a hell of an essence right there. I had better wait until all of my <laughs> shrines are picked up. Now, I've supercharged the boss a little here. I want to be a little extra focused because I knew he's going to drop some extra goodies. Okay, I hope this doesn't say divine orbs on the boss. <laughs> it did say basic currencies duped, which do apply to the boss drops, actually. So I would have probably gotten a couple more uh, Greater Eldritch hikers there. Hey, there it is. That's the shrine I'm looking for. Okay, that's a good shrine. Alright, so, uh, yeah, kind of finishing my thoughts on magic finding... Yeah, it looks like we might get a little bit let down. I'm still going to try Magic Finding. I'm still going to move up for it. I mean, there's nothing else really to gear for at a certain point once you get a certain amount of player power. So I kind of like taking the player power I have, scaling it back, focusing more on Magic Finding anyway. And I'll, I'll see what becomes of it. You know, I'll let you guys know throughout the league what's going on. You can keep track of my videos. And obviously, you can subscribe or whatever <laughs> if you want to uh, keep track of that sort of thing. And here we go. Let's see if I can uh, murder down this essence. 
a little funky teleport. Oh, wow, that's actually a god touched in there. <laughs> oh, that's funny. That spawned god touch, too. God touch monsters still exist in the game. Uh, they still have, like, pretty insane quantity and rarity multipliers, but uh, they no longer have the inherent um, conversion. Although they could randomly also give conversion, in which case it would be pretty nutty. Uh, Alright, so that was a really odd death. Uh, the other death I had earlier, not surprising very much, but uh, this death is a little odd. Now you can still see that I'm actually managing to progress level, especially before that death. Managing to level from 97 to 98, uh, maybe. Um, so you can imagine that uh, definitely was successful in leveling from you know 95 to 96, etc. Uh, it'll get pretty hard to level beyond 97, I will say. Even with the strategy, it can still be a little bit rippy. Strong boxes have a funny way of getting killed occasionally, regardless whether you're immune to freeze or not. Whether you move out of the way or not. Question in the chat, did they get rid of divine explosions completely? No, they still exist. They're just way harder to find and, and much harder to get, and, and they don't seem to be... You know, if you try to target farm them the way we did last league, uh, it's probably not going to be nearly as rewarding as it was. This is still kind of unconfirmed, and, you know, a lot of testing still needs to be done, but um, we'll see. We will see. Let me talk about my opinion of the league so far, reflecting on the whole last uh, week. I kind of already made a video about that, but I'll squeeze a little bit in here. Um, in my opinion, my league start was kind of mediocre. It was nothing really special because I wasn't working. I, I was able to just sort of power through uh, mediocre RNG and get my head 100 in one week. It definitely involved a lot of grinding, uh, primarily this here. I think it took about 250 Crimson Temple maps. I did a few other maps. I did a little bit of Carcass. I did a little bit of Colonnade. I did a little bit of um, Dunes before when I was doing Legion and everything. Uh, I'm expecting things to look up as I move forward. Things to be better, I think, in the RNG department. Certainly would hope so. Uh, I have not tried the Sanctum mechanic at all. Uh, it's something I'll do. I definitely want to try to get my hands on a decent uh, one of those equipable Sanctum thingies, whatever they are called again. Forgot the name of it. And uh, that's going to require me to actually do the League Mechanic. I am looking forward to doing it. I think it'll be fun either way. But for the time being, it's not really uh, in the cards still for me. There's a lot of testing I want to do. I really enjoy mapping anyway. And I think a lot of you guys are going to appreciate uh, me exploring a variety of different strategies. Mapping strategies. Isn't that right? <laughs> I think you guys like that. If you want to get uh, information on the league mechanic, you're going to have to uh, simply visit other <laughs> content creators. I'm not the person to ask for those things. Perfectly willing to admit that. All right, this is going to be a crazy thing there. There we go. We've got our first very, very good uh, essence kill there. That's a lot of currency right there. Uh, probably, I don't know, at least like half a divine in essences right there from that one monster. I uh, don't typically see one that good, but occasionally it does happen. So I'm happy I could showcase a, a really strong essence kill. Really would like to see a seven years bad luck or something drop out of here before we get done, because that would be a bit unfortunate to pay for all those divination scarabs and not see it. You notice that even strong box still is really strong, even without divination card drops the the strong boxes themselves the monsters can just spew out random divine orbs from all that increased quantity things like that uh we're definitely seeing a lot more loot drop than normal when you run this sex thing just period uh, you're seeing way more loot okay horror is a pretty good essence i think that might even be the most valuable one is that the most valuable essence?
Okay. Uh, try and remember where I've been, where I got a loot, where I got a move yet. Veiled Chaos Orb is more rare than a Divine Orb, I'm pretty sure. Unfortunate. Okay, but not more rare than a mirror. <laughs> Definitely not. Oh, reopen. Okay. I remember last time I made one of these videos, a brother stash dropped in the fourth map <laughs> out of like nine maps. That was so sick. Uh, not going to say anything like that this time, I guess. Well, the very last thing to talk about is my plans kind of moving forward. Oh, before I do that, um, I think, uh, let's see, it's, uh, I don't know what else to say on the topic of reflecting the week on the, on the league the past week one. I kind of wanted to speak at least a little bit on what I feel like the, the overall vibe of the community. So it looks like people, generally speaking, are kind of happy about the state of the league, about the state of the game, loot in general. Um, it's very, it's very peculiar. There's definitely a lot of changes that took place that really kind of feel like it kind of went gay from from the haves to the have-nots. It seems like it's very, very easy to juice maps. There's so many variety of different uh, low investment strategies. You know, much lower investment than this one here. And we're talking about like like not even using sextants kind of low investment strategies. And I think a lot of people are happy with the new Atlas passives. But uh, I've certainly noticed that when it comes to, you know, trying to find a strategy where you get a lot of currency, you're earning a lot of currency, that is really hard to find right now. It just doesn't seem to be uh, any sort of clear-cut ways to earn a whole bunch of currency. Um, even There even didn't seem to be all that many ways to sort of get ahead of the curve, even if you were, like, full-blown... Um, group farming and, and trying to... To, 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 I don't know, to um, abuse every possible timing and mechanic you could get your hands on. There just didn't seem to be uh, that many things you could do. And I noticed that Legion and Breach as well, um, the materials for those emblems and uh, fragments and stuff, they were really not worth a whole lot. And yes, I'm aware of like... The TFT channel not being on and stuff. Now, even beyond that, even when they turned things on, even a few days into the league, uh, the prices for these things were, were so much lower than normal. And it it has a lot to do with, I think, is just so many more people farming those things, getting a lot more of those things. There was just way too much supply in the market and obviously not nearly enough demand. And uh, anyone who is really trying to invest in strategies, especially like a Legion strategy, just didn't really see the returns that they used to. We're talking like Legion Sextant, Legion, you know, going uh, Gilded Legion Scarabs, the whole nine yards. Certainly felt to me like uh, it just wasn't as good. Maybe there are other secret strategies out there uh, that were earning a lot more currency. I don't know. Let us know in the comments below if you were aware of finding one that maybe has timed itself out at this point. But uh, this is a good old standard strategy, like I mentioned earlier on in the video. It has not really uh, lost its prevalence over time. If anything, it gets even better. And I know there's still going to be some people probably in the comments are going to say something like, yeah, well, uh, you know, you're not making your currency back or something. Um, you just wait and see. Uh, this is actually going to be, especially if I don't get any loot on this map, any significant loot on this map or the next one. If I go actually go dry with no divination cards, which is of course not fair <laughs> in terms of like average results. Uh, but let's say I do and we do find the results of this video. And if I'm still making something like five divines an hour plus, uh, you know, I want you to think about that. I want you to think about how that actually happened. Because <laughs> I'm going to go into the numbers and uh, you're going to see it. I am going to uh, figure out the normalized apothecary drop uh, currency earning threshold as well with these gambler cards at a certain point before we close out the video. But at least, uh, you know, we're certainly going to see how much I actually earned um, initially.
conquer a map's essence beyond day three. Well, surviving beyond is really hard earlier on in the league. That's for sure. Beyond is the rippiest thing I, I've seen so far this league. It's, even, it's far more rippy than Delirium. Now that might be because I have a lot of Chaos Res, which I don't necessarily always have a lot of Chaos Res. Uh, but I was quite surprised <laughs> just how uh, rough Beyond was on this character, even with them being a champion. So I will start using Beyond as now that I have the Headhunter, but uh, before that just didn't really, didn't really jive. I'm even blocking Delirium, actually. I may have not caught that, but I'm actually blocking Delirium. That's just because I'm trying to play an extra safe variation of this build. So when I go Delirium, which of course I did go Delirium at a certain point, uh, at least like all day seven, I think. Um, definitely getting more drops with Delirium. Make no mistake about that. Got Divination card awarded as a basic currency again. A good chance to duplicate basic currencies. Might get a uh, dupe to Divine Orb. Who knows? See dupe Divine Orbs out of strong boxes themselves. Arcana strong boxes periodically. It looks like this map had uh, three essences, but they're all trash. <laughs> all three of these essences are trash. Pretty trash, anyway. So we're closing up the final map, and I should talk a little bit about how I'm going to move forward. Uh, basically, I'm going to be... First of all, I'm going to come out with a video which is sort of... Perhaps something like an all-in altar farming strategy I would like to try out. Uh, I may even turn it into a perception versus reality video. I'm seeing a, there's kind of a wide-scale perception about uh, altars. They are better, but, but nobody seems to think going sort of all-in altars would be the play. Uh, could possibly outstrip, you know, other variations of the strategy. Where it's, I, I'm actually thinking maybe an all-in altar, you know, basically zero, virtually zero investment, or fully sustainable investment anyway, um, could prove to be surprisingly lucrative. Maybe even almost as lucrative as what you see right now before you. I did test it just a hair in the middle of like day five, I think, but. Uh, I decided for the meantime to go back to my bread and butter strategy here. Uh, of course, uh, after that, I will then for sure put on the headhunter and start uh, doing a little bit of fun toxic rain headhunter shenanigans. It's not that synergetic with headhunter. Of course, it's better than just going uh, soul thirst belt. Uh, but shortly after that, I will transition into tornado shot, maybe with an omniscience. I'm not sure yet. I'm probably going to try and squeeze my way into a magic find variation this strong box right here is the best strong box in the game for getting really lucky uh, double divine drops I didn't get one there but uh, okay at least I had a chance happy to see that at the end the sage robe can be I think a dial as malefaction occasionally so you know you are seeing the uniques drop if you're seeing a unique drop on my screen with my loot filter, that means it at least has a chance of being super high value unique, not just counting leather belts and heavy belts and things, but there's Val Claws, you know, all kinds of different things can be uh, really valuable. There's more uniques than ever that are valuable in this league. All right, my friends, I think we're basically done, and that's going to be it. So these are this is basically bottom of the barrel uh, results from 16 maps. I it, this is absolutely below uh, average results for 16 maps. Not a single divination card uh, value, except ironically one that was not map specific. Uh, so I was hunting essentially the Enlightened card, Seven Years Bad Luck, Dragon Hearts, and Apothecaries. We did not see a single one of those cards. Um, but we're going to go in and we're going to see what I got. Okay, so I have pulled up some of my cheat sheets here. Let's see, we don't need that here. Okay. 
So blueprints, I am going to have to manually calculate after checking excellence here. Uh, unusual gems. Now, it depends on the wings, three or four. They're kind of maybe around 18, maybe a little less. This is pretty conservative uh, pricing points here. Th this is typically very close to what people are asking for price, not selling for price. So if I try to sell these at these prices, if I put them in a tab where if I put any unusual gems um, in, in an 18 chaos tab, it's probably going to get spammed for it. So we're going to count them 18 chaos replica blueprints, three or four winged uh, wings, you know, whether, regardless, we're going to count it 12 chaos a piece trinkets, uh, six enchanted armaments still worth something now around four chaos a piece deception contracts, nine chaos a piece. People try to sell them around 10 or 11 people trying to buy them around eight or nine uh, thaumaturgy three chaos a piece. I just mass sold a bunch of these perception lock picking and uh, the others. And these are the prices that they sold very easily at. Um, let's take a snapshot, see how much is in here. Okay, yeah, that's uh, that's really bad. <laughs> Five point nine two. Just so you know, I did the I did a sixteen map test before this, and this number said I think it said twelve something, to twelve something, and and that was actually also without uh, a single divination card. I had gotten three raw divine orb drops in that particular sixteen map session. So again, you know, just letting you know, like this this is really really bad result. It's actually quite rare to not see a single raw divine orb from 16 maps full of enraged, multiple strong boxes, arcana strong boxes, 500% quantity monsters. To not even see a raw divine orb drop, let alone uh, divination card drops, it's actually quite rare uh, in 16 whole maps. Remember, we did see a raw exalted orb drop uh, after all. So here's the Sephiroth here. We got Crimson Temple maps as well. Um, 20 of them back. So, you know, we farmed 16 maps, got 20 maps back. Uh, those essences, <laughs> essences of horror are big. The first map or so, I think, is the one where I got that Grand Eldritch Ikor um, altar that uh, proved to be pretty valuable. 51 gambler cards, ironically. Pretty high. Um, so well, keep in mind, there's 51. That's one-ninth of an apothecary card, by the way. That's one-ninth of an apothecary card. Um, if you actually check, uh, there, there's a resource... I. I will put the resource in the description below. Um, there is a resource out there that kind of shows you the weightings on these cards. And if I get 51 gambler cards, that means I'm supposed to get at least one seven years bad luck uh, and enlightened card or, or very close to it. Very close to that uh, threshold, by the way, just so you're aware of that. So again, we're kind of unlucky that we didn't see either one of those. Um, yeah, everything else is here. And another thing that's also unlucky about this farm is that there's no notable uniques. I am running a Reliquary Scarab. I do have some rarity on gear. You know, I mean, uh, fairly recently I found a Brass Dome, which is, you know, obviously worth more than a Divine Orb. Nothing. Absolutely nothing here. I, I don't even think there was one worth a shred. Yeah, there's actually zero. That's, that's pretty unheard of. <laughs> so... Uh, you know, if you want to run the Elder Scarab instead of Reliquary Scarab, probably a good choice, actually, unless you have some rarity on your gear. I would recommend at least a little bit of rarity. But remember, that Covetous Shrine <laughs> with increased shrine effect is pretty insane. Gives a ton of rarity uh, to your character, by the way, not the map to your character. All right, so we're going to put here... Ah, here was the number. I actually left the number beforehand. Uh, I had that written down beforehand. So I said it was 12 something. It was actually 11.37 divine. So that was the, the test run uh, before this was 11.37 divine. This time 5.92. Again, for highly RNG uh, strategy, of course. Uh, now we're going to add some to this, of course. Now I am leveling gems in the background. I usually count these for my 100 map sessions, but I'm not going to count them for just this one hour. Uh, however, we need to pull the contracts out. And we also need to uh, parse apart any sort of full winged blueprints. And we're going to see how much they're worth via Awakened POE. Alright, so uh, this is counter here. This is deception. Demolition, that's not worth anything. Another deception. Every single one of these deceptions is... Uh, Nine chaos. Lock picking is two. Maybe I should put these here actually. Unfortunately, the video will have to be extended a little bit for this process here. Unfortunately, Awaken POE and the Excellence cannot 
detect the value of these, sadly. Which is actually one reason why they're worth more, is because people don't go through the trouble of doing this. Well, if you actually go through the trouble of doing this, uh, you're rewarded for it. Looks like I got pretty lucky, actually. I got uh, quite a few deception contracts there. Okay, now we're going to check blueprints. Okay, experimental. Enchantments. I'm going to be sad if we don't have any full reveals in here. Ah, there's a full reveal, but it's it's literally the worst blueprint you can possibly get for a full reveal. The 3-3 three, three enchanted armaments. <laughs> like, it actually is the worst blueprint. Uh, okay. Alright, well, uh, it's actually pretty typical. I get a 3-3 three, three out of here. You can see this is still worth a lot, though. Like, people still want to run these for the specific rewards. So, I'm seeing this somewhere around 40, 40 chaos. We're going to count this as 40 chaos. I don't I don't know exactly if it sells for 40 chaos. I assume it will. Uh, every time I've sort of posted these up for the price range that uh, Awaken PoE is suggesting, they always sell pretty quick. Uh, so, this is going to be 40 chaos. We're going to go ahead and add uh, these in here. So, enchanted armaments. We got... Uh, we got... A uh, total of 8 there, 2-2. Two, two. I also got the 40. We got the 40 added there. Uh, let's see. Replicas, it says here, 12 chaos. 12 times 3, that's 36 chaos. We got uh, trinkets. Trinkets not worth much, a little bit. It's an extra 12 for two of those. We got one unusual gems. It is a 4. Uh, it is a 4 wings, and it's going to be, we're going to list that at 18. Okay, and then for contracts, I mean, that's a measly four there. Then we got uh, nine from the thaumaturgy. And then deception, we got uh, seven times nine. That's 63, if my grade school math is correct. Uh, let's see. Let's go ahead and add these together. So you can see that uh, functionally, the... Oops, I actually lost track of what I was doing. Functionally, the heist and essence kind of play play a pivotal role in protecting you from actually losing money on this. So obviously, for this particular farm, I definitely lost money on the on the reliquary scarab and the divination scarab. Like they they were essentially completely useless uh, for me on here. So that I mean that's basically one one divine orb almost. Okay, we're going to add it to the 5.92. 6.87. Okay, so it takes 6.87 minus 3.15. Divided by essentially one hour. And that's what we came out to. So you can see that in this particular 16 map session that I earned roughly 3.72 divides. And I just got say, done saying earlier that out of all the different times I tested, at least four separate times I tested, by the way, I, didn't, I wasn't testing 16 maps. I was testing either 32 or 48 map sessions. Uh, every single other time, I, I came out above five divines an hour. So uh, I, I'm extremely confident that if, I had, if this had been a 48 map session instead of a 16 map session, we would have seen over five divines per hour. And just to help clarify the point there... Again, you can check the resource if you want uh, in the description down below. I want to point out here that there's 51 gambler cards. We're going to take 51 divided by 449. This is how many apothecaries I found. I found 0. 0.113 apothecaries. Now, the apothecary card is worth over 39 divine orbs right now. <laughs> 39. Uh, which means in this measly little hour i effectively again across averages being you know all the way through averaging things out which i know is a little bit of a hard pill to swallow sometimes you talk about you know farming up a bunch of currency on the fly uh if you want to be if you want more consistent results we could have done this on the colonnade we would have made more currency on the colonnade because we definitely would have seen some patient cards uh, but again if, if, if you're wanting essentially in my opinion the best map that exists out there for divination card farming, you're going to be on the Crimson Temple, especially if you're doing Delhi Mirrors. And we can take this number added to 
By the way, this doesn't even count Seven Years and Lightens and Dragon Hearts, too. I mean, I, I could be adding these normalized in as well, but I'm just counting uh, the Apothecaries. I take this number minus uh, 3.15, and uh, suddenly I'm making over eight Divines an hour. So normalized Divination card drop rates, it's closer to 10 Divines an hour, if you actually count all four different map-specific cards. Uh, and, and you're going to see that RNG level itself out over the course of thousands of maps, obviously. So I know none of you out there are thinking, oh, well, okay, I'm going to farm thousands of maps and I'm just going to get this kind of... Of course, I understand you're probably not going to farm thousands of maps. There is some risk involved, but I'm just showing you. This is how I got my headhunter this league. It took me about 250 maps to find my first apothecary. And in one apothecary, I suddenly had... I had 110 divines after farming one apothecary. Which means I was making a whole bunch of other currency along the way <laughs> in in here. So that should be all the proof you need there. Um, you can check out the VODs from this past week. I was on Twitch every single day. Uh, so I was charting it out throughout the day. Not not 100% of my uh, playtime was live on Twitch, but a large significant portion of it was. I don't see any last second uh, questions on there. Uh, Immortal Call needs to be self-cast. I see that question is on there. D somebody said in the chat, doesn't uh, excellence count contracts? Well, no. I type in contract, nothing shows up. I type in blueprint, nothing shows up. I type in uh, unusual, n nothing shows up. It does not. It is not factored in in any way, shape, or form. Well, that's it for the video. Sorry, uh, the results were a little bit bad, but actually, you know, there is kind of a, there's a silver lining here. When, when I do a farming session and the results are quite poor compared to average, you're getting to see what poor results actually look like. And you can still see that I obviously certainly came out ahead. Definitely didn't, I didn't even just break even or lose money. I still came out ahead. Uh, and that's what counts, you know. So RNG on your side or not, coming out ahead either way, it's a good feeling. And this is a farm that I enjoy. I, I do it every single league. It always ends up being the, the most lucrative strategy in the end, anyway. Uh, especially <laughs> with the Gullhelm Shrine strategy. Um, I don't know if I'll spend the majority of my time this league here. But I'm definitely wanting to test out a few different things. And, as well as trying the Sanctum League mechanic. Up next on the agenda is very, very low investment. Like full sustain. Basically all in alter strategy. Uh, I'm going to be testing 100 maps. So the next video, probably the next video comes out will be a 100 map session involving alter farming. So look forward to that. Uh, that will certainly not be very RNG based, especially if I choose Searing Exarch, which I think I will on that one. I'm happy uh, you all tagged along for the ride. And as always, stay around for the next video. It's coming sooner than you know. Bye.